Welcome to the first episode of Fiction Fridays. I'm Heather Shoemaker, author of Books for Kids and Adults. And to start off, I wanted to um, start with a dedication because books often start with a dedication page. That's the page in the front where you say um, who this book is for. So this episode of Fiction Fridays goes out to Izzy in Massachusetts. Izzy is 11 years old. She's read a copy of The Griffins of Castle Cary, and she wrote me a note. So I would like to share what Izzy wrote to you and dedicate this episode to her. Um, not only does she love the book, but she has a way with words herself. This is what Izzy said. My face lit up when I read the last few chapters. I wanted to read and read and read all night and day. I like the book because it has mystery in it and a bit of a spooky touch. My favorite character was Meg. She acts the most like me in my opinion because she is mature and likes to explore. I wish I could go to the Griffinage and see how awesome it is. So I wanna show you what the Griffinage is. The kids in this book, their last name is Griffin, so they live in a Griffinage. And this is what the Griffinage looks like. I'm gonna show you a picture. So here is the picture of the Griffinage, and you can see that it's a thatched cottage, and it's in England. Now, for those of you who haven't read the Griffins yet, I'm just gonna read an excerpt, just one page from the beginning. This is the... Um, it was originally going to be a prologue, but sometimes as you write books, things change as you go along. Beginnings, chapter one. If you know much about ghosts, you'll know that waiting is one of the things a ghost does best. Ghosts have the patience of eternity. Each April, the ghost stirred. It coughed, cried, and blew its nose, then rose to the surface. April is an in-between season a time when cracks split open along the ancient path from winter to summer, from death to life, a time when accidents might happen. This year, the ghost dislodged a beetle from its ear and wafted up to the walnut tree. There it settled in a crook of branches. Leafless twigs scraped, the buds on the brink of bursting, poised, silent, and swollen. This ghost was waiting for someone someone to whisper to, someone to treasure. It was waiting for a child. Now that's about as scary as this book gets. It's more of an adventure story with some suspense and mystery. Um, the ghost is waiting for a child and on the very next page, three children come to the Griffinage. These are three kids from Minnesota, Meg, Will, and Ariel Griffin, and we meet them on the next page. Now that's what's called when you're writing a book, an inciting incident. Not exciting, like, wow, I'm excited, but inciting. In the Griffin's book, the inciting incident is the arrival of the kids at the Griffinage. They're coming to visit their aunt in England, which we can't do right now because of the travel ban. But uh, when we go new places, strange things can happen to us. So in, it, to incite, sometimes you hear the phrase to incite a riot. Insight just means to stir up and to get things going. And that's what you want to do at the beginning of the book is to, to start something in motion. In fact, that's what the, the word root means in Latin. It means to set things in motion. Um, so in the, in the story that we're familiar with, The Wizard of Oz, the inciting incident is the tornado. That really gets things started. Inciting incident. So now you know it's not exciting, but inciting. It's a thing that gets things going. So when you start a story, you want to start right off the bat and get something going, set things in motion, make your characters have a little bit of trouble, because otherwise we're not reading about anything. Otherwise, the ghost is just sitting there waiting. I want to tell you a little bit about being an author and how I got started because many of you like to write stories or if you don't write yet, maybe you like to draw pictures. I started writing books before I could read or write. Um, I didn't read till second grade. And when I was in first grade, I'm going to show you the books that I wrote in first grade. This is one of my first paperbacks. Um, yeah, I wrote a book called Leo the Lion and I liked it so much I did a whole series. This is book number 11, Leo Goes Camping. Um, I could not read, I could not write, but I drew the pictures. So this was a paperback edition from the 1970s. There's Leo the lion at the bottom there, and I just spoke the story. 
I just said the words out loud and a grown up with very neat teacher handwriting did the words for me. So that's what you can do um, anytime. If someone will listen to your stories, they can write them down for you and you can get started. If you have a younger brother and sister, you can do that for them. I took some of my Leo books that I did in paperback and made hardback versions. So this is hardback because it's made out of cardboard. And how I started when I wrote books in first grade was I, um, I didn't have an inciting incident. I didn't have anything happen. I just had pictures and a few words. And the only thing that happens in this whole book is that Leo, there he is, Leo the lion, he um, wakes up, plays with his friend, and goes to bed. And that's all that happens in this book. But to me, this was an important story that I wanted to tell and it looks like a book and I could turn the pages and I could read it over and over because I had it memorized. So you can tell your stories, even if you can't read or write. And if you already know how to read and write, you can tell your stories even if you don't know how to spell all those words. Just get the story out. But as you go along, you'll get better. I didn't know when I started that you needed something to start things off and set things in motion. I didn't know about inciting incidents, but give your, your characters a little bit of trouble so that they have a problem to solve and an adventure that can happen to them, whether it's a magical adventure or whether it's a real life adventure. Everybody needs an inciting incident. I also wanna show you, um, since I read the first page to you in the Griffins, I wanted to share a little bit about how I wrote that first page. That first page caused me terrible trouble. I wrote it, and I rewrote it and I rewrote it. I wrote it about 47 times until I felt I had it right. And at the end of all that rewriting, I gave it to my editor at the publishing company and she changed nearly every single word and crossed things out, but she did leave that opening sentence, that opening sentence that says, if you know much about ghosts, you'll know that waiting is one of the things a ghost does best. So sometimes you get something right off that works and sometimes you got to work at it again and again. Now, just to show you how this is hard for a lot of people, um, you've probably read the book Charlotte's Web and I wanted to, it's got a really famous opening line, um, Papa, um, where's Papa going with that axe? But he didn't get that opening line right away. So I just want, I have a book here that shows some of his early drafts. It's not fun. You can see his handwriting, his little pictures of Charlotte. So here's just briefly some of the ways he tried to start the story. Charlotte was a big gray spider. Okay. I think I shall speak first of Wilbur. For a barn can have a horse in it, a barn can have a cow in it, and a barn can have hens scratching the chaff and swallows flying in and out through the door. But if a barn hasn't got a pig in it, it's hardly worth talking about. Or at midnight, John Arable pulled his boots on, lit a lantern and walked out to the hog house. So he tried it from all different perspectives, from the spider's perspective, from pig's perspective, looking just at the description of the barn from her dad's perspective. And now we have the one that he chose to go with, the one that we all know when we pick up a copy of Charlotte's Web, and it starts like this. Where's Papa going with that ax? Said Fern to her mother. So we're getting right into the action um, and we get right into saving Wilbur's life. The inciting incident is that ax and Wil saving Wilbur's life all at the very beginning. So I wanted, to, I think it's time for me to bring out my story cape. This is something that I bring with me when I visit schools or libraries or bookstores. And it has, um, it has all kinds of, as you can see them all, all kinds of pom-poms on it of different colors. Um, so what I would do at this time is ask you to come up, raise your hand if you'd like to volunteer, and I'll choose one of you to come pull off one of these pom-poms. The story cape is all of our ideas that we carry around with us in life. So these are all the things that happen to us, all these pom-poms that stick on us. You know how you walk through the fields and you get burrs sometimes stuck to your socks or maybe your dog comes in with things stuck to her when she comes back from a walk? Well, that's what these are. These are things that as I walk through life, um, I th things happen to me or I get ideas in my imagination. And when that happens, just more and more of these, these, these are just pom-poms, stick to me. 
And when it's time to write a book, I kind of pluck some of them off and put them into a story. So these are all representing the story ideas that I got um, and that I put some of them into the Griffins. So right now, which one would you like me to pick? This purple one here or this red one over here? It looks kind of orange, I think, that's red. All right, well, I guess I'll pick this one right here. And if that's not the one you wanted me to pick, send me a note and I will try to pick your pom-pom next time. All right, well, this is an interesting one. This is a story idea I got. Um, if you read The Griffins of Castle Cary, you will realize that hiccups play a very important role in the book. And I got the idea about hiccups being important when um, I had a friend, oh, I used to get terrible hiccups all the time, big ones, the way Will does in the book, although I don't think any ghosts were around. Um, so I used to get lots and lots of hiccups. And a friend of mine, her mom said, if you could, I tried everything. I tried drinking water upside down. I tried counting to um, 10 backwards. I tried all sorts of things. So maybe you have a good hiccup recipe, a remedy. But my friend's mom said to me, I will give you $100 if you can stop hiccuping. You hiccup one more time, I'll give you $100. And I went, oh, $100, that's awesome. I would love that. And so I thought, well, that's easy. I will get rich. But every time she said that, I could not hiccup again. It was impossible. So this kind of thing is partly your body, but it's partly your mind. And it just got me really interested in hiccups and the idea of hiccups. And so I put um, hiccups into this book. And if you read The Griffins of Castle Cary, you'll see that I have hiccups that play an important role in this book. So I'm gonna show you, I, when I do the story cape, I like to show pictures. So I can't quite show a picture of a hiccup, but I'm gonna do my best. So here we go. Here is gonna be, um, we'll get to the next picture here. Here's gonna be a picture of a hiccup. The books are hiccuping, hope you like that one. All right, so if you wanted me to pick it, these all have, different. Um, I don't know where it came from. There it is. There's its spot. These are just stuck on with Velcro. Um, if you want to try this next time and say which one I should pick, there's ones on the back too, on the back there. Um, I will pick another one and hopefully we get the story that you are interested um, in learning about. Now, the hiccups intrigued me. But all sorts of things happen to us in life, whether things that we make up, our imagination, or things that are happening to us right now. Um, so for example, right now, schools are closed, concerts are canceled, everything's off, we're staying in our homes with our families. This is something that's happening to you. It's probably gonna be something you remember all your life. So as you start to do um, artwork or stories or whatever it is, however you put your ideas out there, you'll probably have something that you could say about this time period. Someday you might write a story about a virus that takes over the world and shuts down all the schools and cancels everything, all the sports and cancels everything for kids. Because the things that happen to us is what goes into our stories. Um, events like that and also feelings. Feelings are a big part of books. The reason we care about characters is because we, we care how they feel. We want them to be successful. We want them to come out okay. And we know that life is really tough sometimes, both for ourselves and for the characters in our books. So right now, um, I mean, and the ghosts in my books, um, this is different depending what kind of story you're looking at, but the ghosts in my books are very, very human and they have big feelings and that's why they're ghosts in my, in my version of the story. Um, so you might be having really big feelings right now, cooped up at home. You might have feelings of being mad that you can't see your friends. You might have a lot of sorrow and feeling sad that you, you can't, um, you know, some of the things you were looking forward to have been canceled. So those feelings um, are important and it's good to get them out. So if you um, can find a way to get those feelings out, maybe you, you're the kind that wants to put them in a story or a piece of artwork. Maybe you're the kind that needs to just bounce a ball or, or go outside and get those feelings out. You can also do indoor things like take Play-Doh and just mush it in your hands. So all the feelings that you have now, um, those can go into creative stories. They can also just come out in the open so that you feel better. 
Okay, well, I always like things to look forward to. So I'm going to look forward to seeing you in another episode. I hope you come back. One thing we're always going to do in these Fiction Fridays is have a day's joke. So here is a day's joke. Um, want to hear a joke about a piece of paper? Oh, never mind. It's terrible. It's terrible. All right, I love bad jokes. So if you want, if you need more books because your local library is closed, you can get either a paperback um, or a hardback of many, many books. The, the Griffins of Castle Carry is just out in paperback, and you can also get a hardback if you prefer. Um, you can get it from your local bookstore. But if you would like to connect with me as an author, I'm happy to send you a signed book plate. So that means I won't really be touching your book, but I will be sending you a sticker. Um, and these are things that are meant to go in a book. So you can put them right in the front of your book. And then you'd have a signed book from the author. Now you can see that there's a dog here. Um, one of the things that there is in the Griffins of Castle Cary is one of the characters is a Newfoundland dog. Now maybe you have a pet, maybe you have a dog, maybe you have a really big dog. Newfoundland dogs are huge. They're considered giant dogs and, and the dog in this book is a big brown giant Newfoundland. So if you've never seen a Newfoundland, I want to show you what a Newfoundland looks like and just how cute they are. So here we go. All right, there he is. They are adorable um, and they also drool a lot. So if you live with a Newfoundland, maybe you already know that. So because we have a Newfoundland dog in the book, I made up a stamp and it's one that I can get some ink on. So I'm just gonna do that here and show you how the stamp can go right on your book plate. So I'm just gonna get it on a piece of paper. And this is what I will do for you, is put the dog stamp on your book plate and add your name if you like. So you can buy a book from wherever bookstore is your favorite. Um, a lot of them are doing curbside drive through pickups, just like you get french fries, you can get a book that way these days, or they can ship it to you. And then send me a note and I can add your name or your grandchild's name or whoever it is that you want to have um, a name on your book plate and then it can go right in your book so then you'll um, you'll know that I'm thinking of you as you read The Griffins of Castle Carey. Now Izzy I hope you enjoyed your very special episode of Fiction Fridays and since you ended your note to me with this comment I hope I can find another book that's just as good as this one. I do too. And so I'm going to share a couple of my favorite titles with you. And I hope that if you like the magic and the adventure of the Griffins, that you will like some of these books. So I'm going to share a couple ideas of some of my favorite titles. One of them is Mrs. Frisbee and the Rats of Nim. This has been one of my all time favorite books um, ever since about third grade, and I still love it. So if you don't know Mrs. Frisbee and the Rats of Nim, try that one out. And another book that, that has full of adventure, this is a series of five, but this is book one. It's called The Book of Three, and it's by Lloyd Alexander. And he has some excellent characters. There's some characters here that are just amazing and lots of adventure. So I hope that some of you may enjoy Mrs. Frisbee and the Red Said Nim or The Book of Three um, and find ways that you can keep on reading because while we're stuck inside in houses, reading books can take us all over the place. Now, if you like Fiction Friday and would like to ask a question about writing books or being an author, um, or something about the Griffins of Castle Cary, just get in touch with me. I'm here. Um, leave me a message here on YouTube or send me an email through my website. My website is heatherschoemaker.com. And I would love to hear from you. If you'd like to have your own voice on the air, I'll try to do an audio. Just um, record yourself asking your question. Um, and I can put that audio on our next episode. So I would love to put you in the program and hear from you and happy reading. That's all for this week. It's been great to see you. See you next time.